stop motion uh, animators, even going back to Ladislav Sterovich in the you know early teens, Sterovich tried to. Uh, well, he didn't try. He actually uh, uh, rigged some of his puppets so that they could have blur on them. So okay. going that far, uh, stop motion animators that tried to uh, bring the um, the quality of stop motion, which is a succession of very clear still images, more into the world of um, of live action photography, where uh, for stop motion you're taking a still image each time you take a frame to build the action over 24 frames. Mm -hmm. Shooting in live action, the camera is rolling and the shutter is, is moving and the, the creature, the character, the human or whatever is making a move that gets this characteristic motion going. And it, it, that creates a, 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 um, an, a moving image that we associate with live action photography. That you do not get with stop motion. Mm -hmm. So when we were uh, uh, coming up to do Empire um, and moved up to ILM, uh, it was very clear that because of the motion control uh, equipment that they had to fly the spaceships yes. that allowed a, a motion control that one could conceivably hook up a stop motion puppet to that technology and thereby you know, essentially by making a computer controlled rod puppet, you could build the performances using the motion control technology mm -hmm. uh, and then run that and you would get a, a, a motion blur that would that would integrate the performance more into live action photography. Oh that's brilliant. And so that that was like as as the Ray Harryhausen uh, budgeted Type films that were very very low budget, you know, kind of B pictures, mm -hmm. kind of became the, the more highly budgeted A pictures. It was important to um, develop the technology to, to integrate the characters better into the backgrounds, and that's how the motion began. And it started with uh, uh, I just picked up the the uh, actually the way we we laid it out was I, I had a, a creature that was left over from a movie that I did called Piranha. Okay. Like this little little amphibian thing. <laughs> I just happened to have that because the con the Tauntaun had not been built yet. And so uh, Ken Ralston and I hooked that up to a uh, motion control rig mm -hmm. and a series of tests. Uh, and the tests were pretty amazing just with one axis of, of movement that was shot motion control, it, it brought this thing much more into life. Yeah. So we played with that for the with the Tauntaun, and that's how we executed all of those shots. And then uh, while we were winding down on Empire, uh, we were winding up on Dragon Slayer. And it was at that point in time we decided to commit to a, a test where we built a, a much more elaborate Computer-controlled rod puppet for Dragon Slayer, okay. and that's where the all the arms, the legs, the body, sometimes the head, were all uh, put into these X, Y, Z movers, pepper motors, and that would allow us to uh, do the performance. At that point in time, the way that the technology worked, well, you, in stop motion animation, mm. you physically move a puppet from pose to pose, pose by hand, kind of like sculpting in time, but uh, with go motion, you have to think totally differently because mm -hmm. you're building everything up one axis at a time. With the with a, a, a joystick, essentially what it is is a knob that you turn and it moves the puppet at a, at a certain rate. So you have to equivocate. It, it got really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you have to equivocate the pulses of the computer with frames, and I'd have a, a, an assistant that was calling out these pulses and translating those into frames so I knew when I turned the style we were at frame 6, we were frame, at frame 12, we were at frame 16, so I could kind of visualize where the movement was plotted, but it's only across one axis, so you kind of have to vi visualize the whole thing in your head broken down in all these various parts and just have to build each axis up one by one. Mm. So that was really complicated.
Well, yeah, with Jurassic Park, it was such a huge sea change. Everything yeah. changed after that. <laughs> it was all over. You either did CG or you did nothing. So it wasn't even a, a, a question at one point. You know, personally, <laughs> I preferred to deal with real objects. And, and because of the way things fell together in, in Jurassic Park, it wasn't, and, and the way movies were made subsequently, it wasn't a, um, uh, it, 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 I, I didn't have the time to animate things anymore. Mm. Uh, I was much more involved with pre-production, going out on location, shooting things, the, the scope and scale of the scenes were after we did um, Troopers, we did mm -hmm. Starship, I mean, after we did Jurassic Park, we did Starship Troopers. Yeah. The scale and scope of that just, you know, exponentially <laughs> expanded. So, you know, most of you know, my skill uh, went into, into more, you know, choreography, working with the directors and the writers okay. and the producers to make sure that everything was shot properly and then bring that back and then work with the animators on, on the performances. But we had so many animators, um, I just had to supervise them. Everything became uh, much more technologically complex. Mm -hmm. and, uh, working in the photographic era, you built up a, a history and a knowledge of um, the, the equipment and the technology that you mm -hmm. needed that, that had evolved over uh, 100 years. And so there's a, lot, there's a lot of equipment that would work really well for what you needed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when the digital age hit, uh, there was a lot of trying to find our way through what the technology could do and what it couldn't do. And so we had to break a lot of things. So it was, it was pretty much an empirical, you know, kind of thing. And the one thing that the computer allowed us to do, which allowed production to proliferate, well, back in the Ray Harryhausen day, there was like only one guy that knew how to do that stuff. Studios don't like that. <laughs> and so, and... So he was able to manage by, you know, working really hard, creating single-handedly uh, all of the scenes that he needed to do for his movies. But now, when you have movies that have thousands of shots and hundreds of characters in them, you need an army of people yeah. to do that work. So that all has to be supervised by somebody that knows what they're doing. Oh, the computers have completely replaced it. It's extremely cumbersome. There wasn't there was an interim uh, tool that we developed on Jurassic Park uh, because there weren't enough skilled uh, computer graphics animators mm. that were available to do the work. So we developed this system called the Digital Input Device or DID, which was essentially an articulated stop motion character that had uh, little sensors on it that would understand that would help where the movement was on the on the armature and that would pipe into the the computer and the monitor and then we have a wireframe version of the of the dinosaurs on the screen so it's okay. a very form of early form of motion capture. 